day. I forgot I was live for a second. How's it going? Back with Smash Fishing, we are indeed. We have a massive foraging hook. Check the size of this bad boy. <laughs> Did it in style this time, look at that. I'm just waiting for the epoxy to set a little bit. I epoxied the, uh, the gauge handle in. But look, as you can see, this is my first hook, this little rusty one. This is the second hook, and look, that one's about six inches bigger. And look at this bad boy, boom. It's massive, it's huge. Can't wait to use this. The other day, I was down the beach, uh, on the next the next foraging, tide, uh, next foraging video, um, I was in a hole and I had, I had this and I could, I was up to my shoulder and uh, I could feel something in the back of the hole, but couldn't get it. It just wasn't long enough. So this, that's what this one's for. It's one of those pesky little lobsters that are right down in the holes. Shout out Scott, all right mate? Dan, Bobby, how's it going? Brian Duckworth. We'll get under the, yeah, that's it. Get under those massive rocks. I've just got a, when it's set a bit more, I just need to epoxy inside there. This was from a little um, a little staircase bit, and I just uh, got my, my little file down, and I filed down the handle. So now it's got a good little buff on it, you know? Boom. Booyah. All right, Andy? It's been a while, yeah. I haven't been doing that as much. I, uh, I had a lot of texts on Instagram before saying that all uh, oh, the Americans missed out, so I thought I'd go live now. All right, smash. Met you the other day, the governor's house. Oh, nice one, Harry. Nice to meet you, mate. Make sure to hit that like button as you come in, guys. It's warm today, I tell you that. Yeah, so this is what I've been doing for the last... I don't know, a couple of hours, a few hours. And look, I've even got a little guard on here. I don't want to mess it up, but I can't even get it off. Well, I'll let it set and then I'll show you guys after. So I need to... I'm going to cut the gauges off this one, because these are really good gauges, these, and they've lasted me a while, and I'm going to put them on that with the little floaty. And this one will become obsolete. I'll probably give this one away. And then, obviously, Sam can have this one. Beautiful. You're going to name the hook... The Happy Hooker or something. <laughs> That's a good idea. What's your biggest wrasse ever is seven pounds something. I can't give you an exact weight, but uh, when I weighed it, it was seven pounds something. I, I, I don't know the, the ounces of it. It was a beast. I've had loads of, like, sixes and fives and stuff. What happens, smash? Turn, da, da, da. <laughs> All right, Neil. How's it going? Oi, oi, and glorious fishing. Could do with a hook. Yeah, I'll pro I don't know where, where, what I'm going to do with this yet. This is the one of the first hooks I've ever made. I've had this for ages. And I carved that out of a bit of two by two. <laughs> and it still goes strong. It's still a good hook. It's just not long enough for the big holes that we go to. A ras good eating. Um, they got they got good taste, but like the uh, the texture's mushy. That's the only problem. Got epoxy everywhere. I had it all over me before. Ooh yeah. Oh, getting comments on the YouTube. Do -do -do. A hook for the haters. Yeah, that's it. It's my hater hook. Um, auction it off for charity, the hook. 
Nah, it won't. I wouldn't sell it anyway. It's not worth any money. If you're feeling nice, I will look after it for you. You barely go foraging. Hang it in the new shed, Jay. Memories. Nah, I don't like keeping old stuff. When squid fish in Portsmouth Angler? Very soon. Um, soon as I hear reports of squid being caught, I'll be on it straight away. I've got all my squid jigs ready. You got to remember US people when doing lives in the morning body. Yeah, at the end of the day is, uh, that's why I went live now. Got the English gonna have the morning one and then uh, Americans now. What did you make the hook out of? A spear. Uh, that's a spear. I went to the tackle shop today and brought a brand new spear and then I heated it and bent it over and uh, made a little handle for it as well. Obviously, it needs to be sanded down and stuff yet, but um, no, it looks good. Really good. Actually, uh, I'm well looking forward to using it because I had some, some. I swear they were lobsters. You could feel the lobsters in the hole, so we're going to find out. And we got lobster tides on the next couple of days, I think it is. Saw a bunch of rocks with oysters on them before, yes. But um, I wouldn't eat them at the moment. We're getting onto that sort of time where it's getting into September now, so the algae will, will have died back a bit. So, yeah. Biggest conger I've caught is about 40 pounds. Any tips for catching squid? No, just go really. Um, you can fish either float or spin for them. I use a double jig setup. Uh, when I start fishing for them, I'll show you. I've actually got loads of squid fishing videos on the channel. Um, and I just, I use the same techniques. If you love your content. Cheers, Bobby, I appreciate that, mate. Nice one. Oh, sorry, did I miss that? Oh, Taris, thank you very much, mate. I appreciate that. I'm at work, so I might disappear for a check. That's all good, mate. Sharpen the end and use it as a gaff. Dano's boat, yeah. Well, the, the end's actually quite sharp at the moment, to be honest. I need to get that off. Ah, oh, there we go. You see? I've angled it. So when we find the ormers, we can pop the ormers off in January. So, beautiful. Me and Sam know exactly where we're going in January as well. Um, this ormering tide, we, uh, this ormering tide, this this low tide, we found so many ormers. Obviously, we can't take any. Um, love the vids. Cheers, fishy. I need to drop off Sam's measure to you. Let me know when you're home tomorrow. I won't be home all day tomorrow because I'm making videos. Um, you just got to catch me at the right time, Ryan. I'm at the moment. I am flat out. I'm doing all sorts. I've got paperwork to finish. I've got all sorts to do. We Americans, I very appreciate you. Thank you, Smash. Thank you very much. You make all interesting. Keep it up. Cheers, Tara. So I appreciate that, mate. I always try and vary it a little bit. On the big tides, it's straight lobsters. I love lobsters. But going into like September, October, November. I'm going to start looking at like razor clams, gaper clams, the cockles and stuff like that. And the lobsters as well, obviously, but you know what I mean. Do, -de -de -de. Do I keep a lobster if it's a female? It depends. Uh, if it's a small lobster, about a pound and a half, then if it's got no eggs, I will. But apart from that, um, no, not really. If it's a big lobster, definitely not. If it's a big female, I definitely won't keep it. Eggs or not, it don't matter. Um, because a big lobster, a really big like three pound lobster, say, is gonna is gonna produce a lot more eggs and a lot better quality eggs as well. So it's just not worth doing it. I love cuttlefish. Do you ever catch them in Guernsey? Yes, I've got uh, my my missus actually caught one last year on video as well. I was pulling in the line while she was reeling to get it up the wall because it was bloody heavy. It was a decent one. Um, sorry, I'm missing loads here. Oh, David McEwen. All right, Jay House things. Uh, caught three pound bass last Sunday. Nice, that's a cracking bass, mate. Uh, I'm good, thanks, mate. I'm a bit tired at the moment. I didn't. I haven't been sleeping very well, but um, apart from that, I can't complain. Definitely can't complain. Um, have you ever seen the hook with a? Built-in string loop? No, I haven't, Dave. Definitely not. I don't know. Have you ever seen the hook? No. Um, I've seen the spears with the uh, with the string in, but not one, 
not a hook as if you mean like this hook then definitely not no i made this hook a bit different i made it more round as well if you notice we made this one quite a sharp angle but um it doesn't pull the lobsters out as good as what a, a nice like overall shape does so we're just working on it because that one there that angle there is brilliant for pulling out lobsters because you can like say that's a lobster's legs you can get underneath and hook its whole body and just slowly pull it out and it doesn't damage them. So, yeah, we're just working on it a little bit, you know. I'm really impressed with it as well. I've got all new fishing gear as well, if you guys can see. New tackle boxes for boat and everything. What's that? Can you use a pipe bender? I know how to use them, but no, not for that. Um, because this is, this is marine grade stainless steel. And it's bloody hard. It's really hard as well. So, yeah, that's that's the whole that's that's why, mate. I, what I had was an old axe handle, and it had a, a hollow in it, and I heated it up till it was red, and then I bent it over. Um, it's not easy to do, but these these just last so long because they're they're high grade stainless. They la this will last you for ages. So yeah, that's my theory on it. Oh my god, people are going mad. Um, I'm missing loads here, guys. I apologise. I'm sweating out. I might have to get my uh, my mop out. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Get in there. There you go, guys. Everyone wants to see my hair. There you go. Um, Erica Henderson, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Um, have been told lobster is very bad for you. High in cholesterol, your thoughts? Yes, um, if you eat a massive amount of it, but we eat lobster probably once or twice a week, so I don't think it's gonna make that much of a difference to us, to be honest. But that is a good point. If you ate it like every day of the week, and a lot of it, then um, yeah, definitely. I'm just gonna give these Chuck Hamilton, shout out. Frank's from Las Vegas, Nevada, that's a long way. Thank you, mate, I appreciate you. And Daz. Appreciate you, mate. Thank you very much. Do you add weight to the scaries? No, never. Because if you cast them out and just let them flutter down, that's what they do. See, as they just flutter down, most of the, a lot of the time, the bass will nail them before they even before they even go near the bottom. Um, that's a good question. I find them so light when casting; they don't go far. No, that's the only downside to like like the candies, the scaries, and stuff like that. They don't go very far. But um, but they catch at the end of the day. Like most bass around here are really close in, so you don't have to cast for. So yeah, they like they weigh up one with another because they're really good catchers. Um, do you ever boat fish like drop and don't cast? I don't cast on a boat. I go straight down, Bobby. Um, yeah. Normally bass are in two feet of water, yes. All the biggest bass, David McEwen, that was a great point. Because if you see in like in the mean net and bass in the uh in the shrimp nets, most of those big bass are in like, say if I stand up, they're like that deep of water. I don't go higher than my knee. So that's yeah, a foot and a half, two foot of water in boulder beds. Uh that's that's where they come in. They go absolutely mental. Do you ever go after mullet? Yes, I've got Three mullet videos, or four, uh, on the channel. One of them's a banger. I, I really enjoy it myself. And I don't say that about my videos very much. Um, it's a really good video. Can we get you to do a blind taste test with Sam on which is better, crab lobster cakes? I'm, oh, 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 that's a good question, actually. Crabs, oh, crabs, um, crabs for taste in, in a cake. Would, would appeal to me more than what a lobster would. I'll be honest with you. Um, crabs are nice and sweet, especially if it's a spider crab, not so much a brown crab. Uh, that's probably my least favorite crab out of like a lady crab and, uh, and a spider crab, to be honest with you. Um, sorry if I'm missing comments, guys. They, you guys are commenting like mad at the moment. Uh, Taris, again, thank you very much. I appreciate you, mate. Uh, Rachel, looking forward to the next vid. Lots of Larry's, keep them coming, smash. Rachel, the next video hasn't got like a lot of lobsters, but the one after it is an absolute banger. Don't miss it. Um, the one that I'm gonna upload in, I don't, I can't even remember. I'm trying to upload every two to three days at the moment. So it could be tomorrow or the next day. 
Um, yeah, it's it's not it's not the biggest forage in the world, but the species in it. There's abalone, there's lobster, there's there's congers, there's all sorts in it. So it's it's not a bad video. Um, but yeah, the one after it is is oh, it's a beast. And me and Sam actually had a lobster each this time. Do you offer guide tours? No, I don't. Um, I have been thinking about it, but. Uh, more so that I'm just probably going to take a few subs out with me. I won't charge anyone. I don't. I get paid for YouTube, so I don't really need. I don't need to start charging people to go out. So yeah, I'm quite. I'm quite happy just to take a few uh, subs out as long as they can sign a waiver to say that they any injuries is on their own back, not mine. Because obviously, I, I don't. I don't really want to uh, get sued by anyone. Yeah, do you like? Do you like my mop? There you go. I get so many comments about, oh, are you bald? Or, uh, or what does your hair look like? That's what it looks like. That's why I always wear a hat, see? It's enough to scare a bloody hyena. Smash fish in. Woohoo, top channel. Cheers, mate. I caught a rare Alice scad the other day. Nice. Uh, I've, I, I swear I've heard of it, but I, I, I can't say if I've ever seen one. Hit the like button guys, and shout out and glorious fishing baby. Do you do YouTube full time? I do. Yeah, um, I was sort of forced into it because of the coronavirus, I lost my job. But um, to be honest with you, it's one of the best things that's happened to me. I love it, I love it. It's a, it is a bit of a struggle sometimes, but I can't complain, I love it. Like, I more just don't like the paperwork. Uh, I'm struggling to keep up with the comments guys, I'm sorry. You guys are hammering me right now. Um, shout out Taurus and shout out Rob E. Thank you very much, mate. I appreciate you. It's better to use fish's bait from the area where you're fishing, or does it not really matter as long as it's bait? As long as it's fresh, uh, fresh bait. Because in the summer, we use squid as bait and it does really good. And uh, the squid are not about, so as long as it's fresh bait. Yeah, and to be fair, if you've got a bait in the water, you've got just as much chance as anyone to catch a fish. Oh yeah, I wanted to ask if you ever plan to do foraging video in different countries. Yes. Sorry, I'm getting lots of YouTube comments as well. Can I tag along on a squidding session later in the... Yes, you can, Brian. Um, that's something I definitely want to do with subscribers because it's, it's quite safe fishing. It's safe fishing and it's fun. You know what I mean? We can go get some squid and squirt some ink at people and that's some fun. Um, yeah, I definitely want to do that. No, don't shave. <laughs> when I have a shave, I look like a five-year-old. Pop over to Jersey, I'll take you foraging over here. I'd love to, Jay. Um, definitely. When all the virus stuff calms down everywhere, then I'm going to start looking at everything, you know? Jen, look under the bed. Don't stitch me up, George. <laughs> she already knows. Shaving is overrated, yeah. I like looking like a rebel. How do you make your gauge for foraging? Oh, good question. Um, these. This is just an old barrel. Just an old plastic barrel, but as long as it's really thick sort of really dense uh, plastic, and then you can just cut them out with a little saw or, I wouldn't say a knife because it's dangerous, but just cut them out any way you want. You know what I mean? We always make our gauges a bit bigger than what the size limits are, because then there's there's no problem, you know? Like our Ormers, I think, I think it's 80 mil over here, and ours are about 84, I believe. And the same as the lobsters. Uh, lobster, lobster size over here is, um, sorry. Lobster size over here is 87 millimetres, but our gauges are 90 or 91. I think Sam's is 91. No, mine's 91. That's 91 mil. So it just shows you, like, when we're on the video saying, oh, it's just in, it's actually in by three or four millimetres. But um, we, we find, like, 87 mil lobsters a bit small. Um, surprising that difference, you know, so 90 mil is a good size lobster to eat as well. That was a good question. Very good question. Measure, measure then cut, add a cork ball so it floats if you drop it in. That's exactly it, Dave. Exactly that. Just a little, uh, the, these, I found a net on the beach once and I cut all these off. And I dragged the net off the beach and put it in the uh, bin. This was the best thing I did because these come in bloody handy. 
you see they're on they're on all of the foraging hooks and uh like dave just said yeah when you drop these in the water this floats up like this and you can spot it from a long way so it's a lot better amanda warner uh love all what you do really appreciate your lives and vids i appreciate you amanda thank you very much i'm sorry if i miss any of your uh uh, comments guys, they're, they're coming in really fast. Make sure to hit that like button as well Free haircut if you visit Somerset Smash. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I'll take you up on that one uh, My girlfriend's been going mad about it. She don't like it Gillnet floats. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Gillnet floats. That's it Is that set yet? Get in there I'll sand all that off as well. It looks a bit dodgy, that handle, but um, but look, it's perfect. If you've got a really thick handle, it gives you cramp in your hands. So, like, you want it so it's nice and snug, you know, because sometimes we're foraging for four hours. So, you, you need it comfortable. I'm looking forward to Monday and Tuesday. Get some lobsters. You deserve a million subscribers already. Maybe one day, mate. I'd come over from Texas to go squid fishing or foraging. Do it. If you're over in the squid season, then that'll happily take you foraging. Why hasn't your girlfriend been in every, any recent videos? Because most of the videos I do now is in the daytime or like really late at night. So she's either at work or asleep. So yeah, I, I, a lot of what I do depends on tides, like when the tides are. So just want to say, Jay, Sam, and Inglorious are great human beings, cracking lads, and it's a pleasure to know them. Uh, thank for your time to fly and hang out. Cheers, Ryan, mate. And yeah, you're exactly right. You're a good lad as well, Ryan, mate. I've still got all the hats that you sent me. Look, it's right there. But um, yeah, Inglorious and Sam, they're both legends, man. That's why they're, they're my best mates. Uh, I'm in Somerset. I'll have a fishing session. Going to film some fishing content now. You inspired me, Smash. Thanks. Shout out Metal Eric. I'm out tomorrow night. Uh, on the high meet. But it's like deadliest catch here at the minute. North Wales. PB form back this summer. 14 pounds. Squid and Sandhill cocktail. Nice. Yeah, smash the limits. Yeah, they are. This uh, spider crab limit's too small. The lobster's size limit is too small. Um, I believe the ormers are too small. Um, that's why a lot of the time we just take them when they're a lot bigger because it's it's just not worth eating them. Is there a commercial lobster fishery there? There, there is some commercial boys, but we don't have like V notch system and stuff like that. Just tuned in. Where can I get one of those hooks? Google it everywhere. You won't find them on the internet. Um, I make them. I make them all myself. I don't sell these, but I literally just carve carve the ha Sam carved that one. Uh, I carve the handles out of a piece of wood and a Stanley knife or a or a file. Um, if you just go to a tackle shop and buy a spear and just bend an end on it, and then just drill a hole in a piece of wood and bung it in, it, it's it's so easy to do. It really is. Yeah, and they're so handy. Is it allowed to harpoon in Guernsey? No, because I was thinking of a video. I I was I was thinking. Sorry, I'm getting loads. Of, I'm getting loads of texts. Um, I was gonna do a video of where I go out and spear a fish with like a big sp like a hand spear or something like that. But um, it's against the law to spear out of the water in Guernsey. So yeah, so no is the answer. Noisy D, thank you very much. Where did you get that? I don't know what you're on about. Are you on about my hooks? Um, yeah, they're all made by me. Or Sam. Sam makes his as well. What's the size limit on the Guernsey butter? <laughs> Have you got any tips for foraging? Example, Kobo. You just got to look, mate. Um, Kobo. Kobo, it depends what, what do you want. Do you want a lobster? Do you want 
clams? Do you want ormers? It depends what you want. Any any sort of foraging in Guernsey, don't matter where you are, um, you have to have a really low tide. The lower tides, if you can go on a 0 0.6 or something like that to Kobo, um, there's probably a 60% chance you're going to find a lobster. Um, it just depends on tides and knowing where where all the uh, all the spots are really. Yeah, uh, foraging for lobsters is is a huge part of it is knowing where the holes are. If you can memorise where all the lobster holes are that you found and you keep going to those, eventually you're going to find lobsters. You're going to you're going to consistently find lobsters as well. That's what makes us look so good. It's because we we know exactly where we're going. Um, that's the best advice I can give you. Just go for a very low tide and then your chances will double. What's the best bass bait? Verm or peeler crab or ragworm or half a mackerel. Uh, if you're looking for like a giant, uh, just one big massive fish and you're willing to put the time in, uh, go out with a running ledger with two size seven O's and throw it out and just hope. Because uh, most of the time, that's how the massive bass are caught. Just someone randomly throwing half a mackerel out. From New Zealand as a port and smash fishing. Shout out New Zealand. Bunch of legends. Where did you get the tackle box from? Uh, someone over here on Facebook was selling all of his gear. And I brought a TLD as well. I brought a TLD 20. So I can do like a little bit of blue shark fishing and stuff. Yeah, I'm well impressed. I paid 75 quid for this. And it's, uh, I looked on Amazon, they're quite expensive. And I brought some of them. I brought them for Sam. They're, they're literally brand new. So shout out whoever sent those to me. Um, oh, sorry, I missed that. Quadriplegic life. Shout out you, thank you very much. I appreciate you. I found best bait for bass is lady crab peeler. Yeah, lady, any sort of peeler crab. If you can buy, find like a big keeper brown crab, or you could just cut it into big chunks like that. Like you'll catch bass like that or, or spider crabs. Are shore crabs edible? Yes, they are. They're actually quite nice if you can find like the really big ones. Um, any plans to come to the US? Yeah, eventually. One day I will. Triton and Shimano will last you years. Yeah, they're beast. I was really surprised. 75 quid. When will your PO box be open? Oh, I'm going to do that either tomorrow or Monday. Um, I phoned them up and I said that I definitely want it because they got back to me and said that I don't need a reference because because I'm a, I'm a business and I've only been a business for like a year now. and Well, not even a year. Um... Uh, there's nowhere for me to get a reference for my business, so they're just gonna. I have to just pay up front the 270 quid, and then, um, yeah, then I can open it. Maybe another time. No, I'm definitely gonna do uh, PO box. How do you know Scott Harris? He's a good. He is a good, a good man. Um, Scott Harris. Quite funny that Scott Harris's child was being born. Um, he was in the hospital and he was binge watching my videos. It's quite a good story. This this is how I know him. Um, well, I've never met him in person, shall I say? And uh, he was binge watching my videos, and I was watching it every half an hour. I'd get a comment, "Oh, great video! Oh, great video!" Or or try this out with your cooking. And it was like, and it went on for about ten videos. So I started chatting to him, and me and him were chatting to about I believe. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Scott. It was about about four or five in the morning until his child was born. And then from that day on, we've always been chatting in the comments and everything. Um, the internet's weird, like you just, you build up like a communication with people. You build a friendship even though you've never met them. Same as like Earl's fishing. Like big shout out to Earl, he's a legend. And uh, like we just got chatting through the chats and stuff. When he lost his uh, channel and stuff, we all tried to help him. And then ever, ever since we've just been mates. A video of opening subs parcels. Yeah, they will be. Yeah, just don't send me nothing dodgy. When did you find Smash's channel? Yeah, uh, you'll have to ask Scott because I, I, that's that's what I remember of it. Great salmon here. Ooh. Good. Smash. How's Nemo wonder? We need an update. We got more fish. Uh, we got rid of the the little fat black fish. 
because it was getting bullied by the big gold one. So uh, we had to get rid of that. And then we got loads of these little sucker fish now. We got like some little orange ones and some little black ones. They're well cool. I love it. What's your best bass? Double figure. I've weighed an 11 pounder, but I've definitely had bigger. Um, do -do -do -do. Massive gilts in Wales. Nice. We get huge ones here to 10 pounds. We get double figure gilt head here. Um, I believe the British record was broken. Oh, it might have been Channel Island or British, one of them, by Toby Patch. I believe it was £10, 6 ounces. High smash, great channel, top content. Cheers, Darren. That load of Cajun seasoning, laugh out loud. Gonna test spice. Yeah, sound. Uh, if anyone sends spices and stuff, we'll definitely try them out. When's the next. Shed drinking session. Uh, I haven't made my shed up yet. I'm still in the process of moving into my girlfriend's. That's why I've got like loads of stuff here. And uh, down near the door as well, I've got loads of stuff. Catch and cook blue shark. Yeah, I'll probably end up getting fined if I did that. Um, where's your favourite spot to fish or forage? I would never tell you that. Uh, no offence to you, mate. I just won't. Uh, if you advertise your spots to 300 plus people, um, guaranteed it's going to be people there. Uh, the foraging spots I go are very small. So if, if there's like 10 people there, um, it leaves nothing for me to film. So I definitely wouldn't give my spots away. Not in a million years. Uh, is there trout on the island, mate? Yes, there is. I believe they stocked the reservoir with trout. Uh, I'm not I'm not the most update person with uh, fresh water or pond dipping, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, I'm just not. Has Jan now lost her spare room to the new smash shed? Yeah, literally, like it's my new smash shed. I got camera gear all down there, and uh, my laptop and all my like my my taxes and whatever goes down there. Top channel, mate. All the best. I watch your videos all the time. Great content. Cheers, mate. I appreciate that. Great here. Oh, nice. I wouldn't mind going trout fishing, but it's not its not really my scene, to be honest. I love going out foraging and trying to catch congas and stuff like that. Pond dipping, yeah. Uh, do you... Do you have sheep heads over there? No. But we've got stuff called, like, black bream and gilt head bream. They look very similar, apart from the um, black stripes, you know? Uh, we've just got black bream, so they're just, like, silver. Um, do you like the fish like or is he your rival? Uh, I wouldn't say I, did, I dislike the bloke. And definitely not my rival. Uh, I don't feel like freshwater fishing is proper fishing. No offence. <laughs> Fair enough, Edward. I won't discriminate. Would you rather stay local or forage overseas? Uh, both. Uh, I wouldn't mind doing both, to be honest, Darren. That'd be great. You ever fished in Scotland? No, I'd love to go after those skate. I've seen uh, Mark Williams Sea Angling. Shout out to that channel. Um, he did like a skate video. I'd love to do that. Go get some massive skate on the boat. Do you put garlic salt in your tea? Nah, that's more like uh, chilli flakes and stuff like that. Nah, I'm joking. Stick to forage and so much so enjoyable. Everyone's got their own preference. Some people prefer the fishing. Some people prefer the foraging. Uh, I would never go one-sided and do one thing because I'd get bored. Um, not like bored, but, but I, I can't do the same videos all the time on the channel because it, it messes with me. I like to chop it up and be like like random videos, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I like it all the same, so I don't want to... I don't want to just flood the channel full of coastal foraging or just fishing, you know what I mean? Have you ever caught a garfish? Yes. Uh, our garfish are only like this big, though. If you're on about, like, uh, yeah, long nose, what we call them here. What's good start a sea fishing rod to buy? Just a 10 foot pier rod's pretty good, to be honest. Or 12 footers, even if you want to go a bit further out. Um, yeah, just, it, like, all of that just depends on what you're going for, to be honest. It really does, because, like, if you want to go float fishing, you'll get, like, a spin rod or something like that. Um, it just depends what you want to catch. 
Hi Jay, watch Captain Dano's huge lobo wobbo. Nice to see you make an appearance. Yeah, I wanted to see what that weighed. Four pound nine lobster, that was a beauty. That was a cracker. Can't beat catching a wild brown trout on the fly. Nice catch a couple of them too. Fair play, mate. Nice one. But uh, it is a great channel. Got me through the lockdown where we couldn't get on the coast. Cheers, mate. What's your biggest lobster? About three and a half pound, I think. Um, yeah, about three, three and a half pound. Nothing, nothing huge. See you later, Andy, mate. Can you tell your dad he's got some funky waders? Yeah, he loves them. That's, they're called oil skins. They're not waders. I'm sweating in here. It's really hot. Did you learn all your stuff from school or experience? Uh, from my dad. Um, a lot of it came from my dad, and a lot of it come from books, to be honest with you. Uh, oh, because there's a lot of... Uh, I, I keep forgetting that different people are in the chat. Um, a lot of my foraging stuff comes from stuff like that, books. Books on, like, species, or how to cook stuff, or what's in season, and... Um, yeah, uh, research is key to foraging. Uh, the fish inside is all my dad, basically. How would you set up to fish off a pier? I'd throw a conga bait out if it was me, to be honest with you. Do you get much hate? Oh, we all get hate. Uh, but I'm quite a thick-skinned lad. I, it doesn't bother me. You know, you can call me names, but I was brought up. Sticks and stones can I break my bones, not bloody words. You know what I mean? You can call me what you like, but you said to my face, it's a different story. Nearly nine months ago, that was, Jay spoke for hours. It was fab, you were the first person to know my son, son was born. Yeah, get in. Yeah, what a legend, Scott. Yeah, I'll never forget that, man. Never forget that. I just sat there for hours in bed, just chatting to him. I can see your new... Yeah, uh, that's the new hook. I'm just waiting for the epoxy to uh, dry. It's a beast. Oh, it's getting there now. That's solid. And what I'm going to do in a minute is I'm going to cut this down and I'm going to put the new gauges on. It's a beast. I can't wait to use this because there's some holes that I know exactly where they are, but I just can't get my arm deep enough in to pull, pull the lobsters out. Ow! Yeah, can't wait to use that. It's going to be sick. You should get a fish tank and um, put things in it. I'm not into I haven't got the time to start looking after saltwater tanks and stuff like that. Will you be doing any more walk around bonkers military? Yes. Um I was gonna go I was gonna go today, but the weather just poured down the whole day. So what I did is I left it and I'm I'm gonna think I'm gonna go for some tuna steaks. I'm gonna try and see if they've got any tuna steaks in and I'm gonna do some tuna. I want them like with some soy sauce and stuff and I'm going to cut them really thin and have it like little sushi style. Uh, I'm, I'm not, uh, don't get me wrong, I'm no chef, but I'm still going to try. <laughs> Had to get a longer hook than Sam, yeah. That's Sam's hook there. Whoa, I keep dropping things. There you go. That's Sam's hook. Is that oak? It looks like an oak handle. Is that oak? I don't know. We're all waiting for the sushi. Yeah, I'm going to do that soon. Tope better than tuna, in my opinion. Maybe. Good <laughs> <laughs> man, please keep up the quality content. Cheers, mate. How far can you catch tuna and what bait do you use you can't catch tuna over here you're not allowed i'm on about when i do the vlogs where i go out to the bonkers and then i go to the fish shop and buy it bass in there's loads of bass in the uh, veil mate 
Guernsey is a great island. There's so much uh, concern in fishing. There is, there's so much, Colin. Um, if you love fishing and foraging, you're in your paradise over here. Best way to catch prawns, a trap or a push net. Depends, if you want sand shrimp, then a push net. If you want the prawns, then definitely like the, the metal ring net. When will squid, squid's gonna be here in the next few weeks. Oh, they're in Ireland already. That's good to know. Um, they're going to be here soon. They might even be here now, but no one's. I haven't seen any reports for them. I might try tomorrow. The merch you have is super good quality. Loving the shirt. Cheers, mate. I appreciate that. Smash Ramsey needs to take those shrimps and make Cajun dish. All right, I'll try. What is the best fish for eating? Red mullet. I love red mullet. Um, I haven't eaten a red mullet in a while, but they're delicious. Um, eat only what you catch uh, and just forage fish for your food so, you know, uh, it'd be too easy to do that um, if it's over a 24 hour period on a big tide I'm going to be eating like a king I'll, I'll just catch bass and lobsters the whole time I'm quite happy to do that well as long as I can find a keeper lobster but bass I can definitely catch a legal sized bass and eat it but um, I don't know I might do videos like that in the future um, would you try magnet fishing? I imagine you would find things from the water. Maybe. Uh, I'll have to look up the rules on that though, because there is there's a lot of rules with like metal detecting and stuff like that. There's there's a ton of laws on it, so you gotta be a bit careful. Great shoe, dude. Does everyone say A? Yeah. Yeah, they, everyone says A over here. Uh, just like Canada, yeah, good point. Do they still fire Midway Gun from Castle? Yes, they do. Yeah, from Castle Corner, they still do the uh, 12 o'clock cannons. Love your videos. Cheers, Ben. How are you doing? Love the night foraging videos. Thanks for shouting out Pops. 99th birthday. Yeah, shout out Pops. That's cool. Uh, no problem, Deborah. No problem. Did he... Have you ever eaten sand fleas? Um, no, because we only get little sand fleas like that. I know in the States you get the massive things like that. I'd love to try them. I bet they taste just like shrimp. Best tips for catching bass in Guernsey. Look for shallow rough ground. Um, or, or like rack beds. Big weedy beds or bootlace weed. Anywhere, any of those you'll find bass. Um, they're everywhere. Guernsey's flooded with bass. What do you mean you're not allowed to catch tuna? You're not allowed to fish for tuna anywhere in the UK. Um, if you catch them when you're shark fishing, then uh, you have to release them in the water. You can't, you can't pull them up for a photo or nothing. Favourite eating crab is spider crab. Why does your merch say three days left to buy? I have no idea. I couldn't tell you, mate. It's really hot in this room. 24 hours with no food. That wouldn't be too hard. I've fished for longer than that with no food, to be honest with you. As long as I've got some water, I'll be sound. What about dogfish? Everyone catches them. Uh, I've done I've done two dogfish catching cooks on the channel. Bass run with the mullet sometimes. They do. Uh, when I've been spearfishing in the past, I've seen the mullet and the bass doing this. They're up like that, blowing into the sand. And that's why you see those pits in the sand sometimes. That's them trying to blow the logworm out. Send me contact number on my channel. Any soul in your area? Yes, but they don't come up very often. Uh, now's the time you're going to get them. I had one a few years back of 353, three pound five ounces, was a good one. And then uh, shortly after, I had one about a pound and a half. Uh, so you do get them, but not often. You ever heard of a weaver fish? Yeah, we get weaver fish and we get the greater weaver fish on the Grand Bank as well. I'm off to Weymouth next week on a family holiday. But definitely going to have a go at fishing off the pit. Give it a go, Dave. You never know. See a lot of YouTube memes. Do you collect anything like how people collect coins and stamps? Fishing tackle or cameras. I love my camera stuff. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm all fishing related, pretty much. You should put Sam's glasses. You almost you still have the clip. I don't know if I still have the clip. I've got a few clips of me and Sam getting bitten by lobsters and stuff. What is your best video one with the most views? Urban foraging. Uh, where I went out one day after work. It was literally, that was a spur of the moment video. And um, I went out and uh, I had my work gear on and everything. I went down the beach and I was like, oh bugger it, I'll go in the harbour. I went around looking around in the harbours and stuff. And uh, I found some lobsters. I found a massive female lobster in a barrel. It was like this little black barrel like this big. And uh, there was a massive lobster in it. And then uh, shortly before that, I found, or after it, I found lobsters underneath uh, old crab pots and stuff. And I found all sorts that day. I found scallops, oysters, I found all sorts. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, I don't want to do the uh, urban foraging again because I, I don't want to promote people going to the harbours. Because if people, if you eat the oysters and stuff out of the harbours and stuff, it can be really dangerous. So I don't really want to do that. Have you ever seen a shark? Yes, I've seen poor beagles. What bait can you catch the bream on? Oh, you'll catch bream on anything. Mackerel, squid, any worm baits, like logworm, ragworm, verm, white, white bait, all, uh, all sorts, a any of it. Um, bream are not fussy, scallop frills. Never really been sea fish. So I thought it would kill a few hours. Yeah, sea fishing's fun, mate. Jay, where's the hat gone? It's too hot in here. I'm sweating out. Well, I've got the Velux open as well, and it's just boiling. There's the hat, look. You trying to diss my mop on my head? What's a good live bait? Uh, sand eel? Um, mullet. Baby mullet, this big. They catch bass really good on a free line. Uh, smelt. Rosalie. They're all good. Hell yeah, smash fishing. It's the S-H-I-T. Cheers. I'm not saying your name, man. You're going to hit me up. Do more squid videos. Uh, I'm waiting for the squid to turn up. You strike me as a man that never sleeps. Yeah. Um, I'll be lucky to have four hours. Depends, though, because uh, if I go out at night, like, till, like, six in the morning, I'll sleep till 12 o'clock in the afternoon. So... I get my sleep, but I, I sleep at different times to other people. I tend to come out at night time. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Smash. Keep up the good work. Gotta go. See you later, TBL. What's your favourite crab to eat? Spider crab. Definitely spider crab. We get spider crab in Florida, but I have never seen those monsters you and Sam find. It must be a different species. There's, uh, we've got loads of different species of spider crab over here, but the big ones are seasonal. They only come over for a couple of months and then they leave again. Cockles are... Oh, sorry. Cockles are good for bass too. I've never tried it. Never tried it. Um, I, I assume it, yeah. If you can find big cockles. Uh, gaper clam's good for bass, and so are razor clam, but yeah. I can't see why cockles wouldn't work as well. Nice to find a big brown crab to cook. Um, they're not my favourite. Really not. I would rather go for a lobster or a spider crab than a brown crab any day. How common is it around your area, around your place, for people to go foraging? It's getting more and more s now. It's around. Sustaining oneself from one surrounding is a nice opportunity. Not many live. Yeah, um, foraging's getting very popular over here. On the last tides, I seen so many people. It was brilliant. I was chatting to all sorts of people. Young kids. They're like, oh, are you right, Smash? Oh, it was brilliant. I love it. But um, yeah, it's getting more and more popular. And I went to Mixed Fishing Supplies today. And they're starting to stock, like, shrimp nets more. And, uh, like, drop nets and stuff like that. Because they, they're getting a higher demand for foraging equipment. So that's good. It's good for Guernsey. Um, yeah, so it's getting popular, but what I like is like, I get a lot of people, um, texting me in saying, oh, we found this lobster today. We put her back and all that. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people going out, finding big lobsters and just putting them back because they just wanted the fun of going to get a lobster, which, which I, I got a lot of respect for. That's really cool. 
And then you've got some people that want to keep them, which is fair play. So, yeah, uh, as long as people are sustainable and respect, respect what they're doing, you know what I mean? That's fair play. I love to see it. Mix should give you a discount. I get discount on mixed fish and supplies anyway. Uh, they give me they give me fifteen percent. Should you? Would you ever go on the deadliest crab boat? Probably not. Nah. Cockles, clams, or mussels? Mussels. I love mussels, but. Uh, I don't really forage them over here because there's not many on the clean beaches. Uh, all the mussels are here on the east coast, but I don't forage like um, bivalves from the east coast because obviously they filter the water and there's a sewage outlet. So foraging is everywhere now. My local beach is rammed with tides, most tides. Nice. It's nice to see as long as people are respecting things and not taking all the, any small stuff and just keeping what's legal. It's sustainable, you know? You can go out, have a feed, and have a lovely day of your family on the beach, which is wicked. Which over here, I seem to see more families than I do just like random people, you know what I mean? Which is wicked. There's always like kids with the mum and dad. I love that. That's brilliant. Take your whole family out. Have you ever went diving for abalone? It's illegal. You're not allowed in the water anywhere above your shoulders, I believe. Um, for abalone, you're not allowed to dive for them. You're not allowed to snorkel for them um, That's how they keep the population good. See we don't have a bag limit for ormers So we have a strict size limit which they do police really strictly But um, yeah, you can take as many as you want on the tides But um, yeah, but you can only get them at the low water You have to go down on the beach and get them But if you go in the water and dive you can get a five gram fine. So yeah, so yes yeah, there's strict rules on it. At the end of the day, you've you've got to know you've got to know the laws. You have to. I got my dad into foraging. You got me into it. Cheers, Devon Fishing. Shout out, nice one. What's your favourite wrestler in your opinion? Oh, I got it in front of me. Um. Hands down, a uh, Texas rigging with these, the gulp sandworms. These are brilliant, all the logworm. The logworm catch the really big wrasse as well. But yeah, the sandworm and logworm from the gulp in that liquid stuff, that these are killer. They're like candy. The wrasse just hammer them. Have you ever thought of buying a boat? Um, I've had boats in the past. I've had quite a few, but... Um, but no, I'm not interested in having one at the moment. I, I, I'm a, I've always been a big shore fisherman. I love, I love going off the shore. You're growing a beard. No, it's just because I'm lazy. I'm growing a mop on my head too. Would those gold worms work for bream? Yes, probably. Uh, I've never tried them for bream, but I believe they would. Because they're scented with amino acids and stuff. Um, yeah, there's no reason they wouldn't. Are you a bass fisherman or a bluegill fisherman? We don't catch bluegill over here. We've only got European sea bass is what we have. We don't have like the large mouth and the small mouth bass that you get. Would you try light rock fishing for many species? Yes, I've got a light rock fishing um, rod. I've got a rod about a foot and a half long and it's really flexible for catching like giant gobies and blennies and little scorpion fish and pipe fish and stuff like that. Um, I just haven't had the time to make the video, to be honest with you. I've got some cracking spots where I can even go get little cuckoo wrasse. So that'd be quite cool. What does conga eel taste like? It's very meaty. Um, it's the closest thing you're going to get to a steak out of the fish species. But um, the only problem with it, you have to cut it into steaks or know how to dissect them properly. Otherwise, because uh, their bones are like a V shape, like, like this. You know what I mean? So you've got to cut the meat out of that. But if you cut them into steaks, it just falls off the bone. So I recommend cutting them into steaks. I've tried the ison worms, Deb and Fishing, but um, these just outfish everything. I've tried ison worms. I've tried the tsunami worms. I've tried um, 
I've tried all sorts. Um, I've even tried live ragworm versus these, and these got more bites than live ragworm. So it is what it is, to be honest. That's just my personal opinion, and from experience, that's it's what works for me. Um, Robert White, love your work, mate. Thanks, Robert. I appreciate that, mate. Conga make fab fish cakes, yes. And also Ling as well, eh? My my uncle and my pop and stuff, um, they used to rave about Ling for uh, scampi and stuff. So, yeah, and fish cakes, I would have thought it'd be good in. Cheers for the answer smash, be cool to see LRF video in the future. Um, I'll make a point of doing that sometime for you, mate. Uh, yeah, that'd be a fun little, I, I might even go down the lighthouse or or my, I've got a spot where I know I can catch some cookie wrath. So I'll, I'll try and get some cookie wrath. That'd be cool. Uh, I don't fish for carp or anything fresh water. Um, not that I wouldn't want to. If I was in the UK and someone offered me to go pike or zander fishing, I'd love to. Or uh, catfish. I'd love to do that. But um, I don't go out my way to do it. Put it that way. Did the missus like the tidy up? Yeah, I'm in the good books, Josh. <laughs> What's the liquid in it? I don't know. Um, I believe it's got amino acids in it. Looks, feels, tastes alive. Recharge. Oh yeah, and you can dip them back in the liquid and it scents them again. But yeah, they're just killer. They're brilliant. Say hi. Shout out the fans in the Philippines. I came across your videos two weeks ago. I'm now hooked. Keep up the good work, mate. Cheers, Mark Jones. I appreciate that, mate. Ever thought of popping over to Portsmouth for proper conga? Maybe. Maybe one time. Do you get them from Mix? Not these. I got these from Amazon. And they took about three weeks to come. So if you order them, um, expect them to take a little while, man. But when you've got this tub, see... Then you can buy the packets from Mix, the sandworm packets, and you can just take them out and put them in here, and that's what I do. Uh, the logworm you can get on Amazon. What's going on, Smash? Just pop, just got in. Uh, all good, Mark. We're just chatting, fishing, really, and foraging. Oh, I got a bad back. How many lobsters can you eat safely? <laughs> as much as my stomach can take. <laughs> um, I would say two or three a week is probably not going to kill you. But yeah, um, like fish is really good for you. But like shellfish, like the bivalves and lobsters and crabs, they will bring your cholesterol up. So um, yeah, just don't eat too much of it. You know what I mean? It's like the same as anything though. If you eat a lot of uh, bacon constantly... It's not going to be good for you. It's going to bugger up your heart. So, um, everything in moderation. Any tips for first time bass fishing using sandy lure? Be using 18 pound mono line. 18 pounds quite strong. Um, it depends. What If it's deep water, cast out and just count. Count how long it takes to get to the bottom, yeah? And then when you're reeling in, try and stay mid-water. Mid-water. Say it's 10 feet, try and stay 5 feet. So say it, say it takes 6 seconds to get to the bottom. So next cast, you cast out, do 3 seconds, and then start retrieving. And you'll be mid-water. And usually, like, a lot of the bass will be mid-water or bottom. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, just try different things, mate. Try and count... See where they are. If they if you start catching low to the bottom, then fish the bottom. If you start catching sort of like halfway down, then then keep that keep that distance. Are the Gopa natural look? Yes, they are. They're very very close to ragworm. Um, I don't want to get them out because they do smell a little bit, but they're very close to ragworm. Or yeah, or you can do top water. But he's on about a sand eel lure, so he's on about a diving lure, um, Ryan. Smash. You're like a... F You're like a fishing and foraging encyclopedia. <laughs> yeah, far from it. I've got a lot more to learn yet. But most of it, any kids watching, read books. Um, 
I know it's a horrible thing, but trust me, even if you go for a poo, just go read a book for a little bit. Uh, it does help, trust me. Um, it would be great if you made a P.O. box so I could send you some stuff from the States. Um, it's going to happen either either Friday or Monday. I will advertise it, though. I'll, I'll put a community post up when I've got my P.O. box sorted, all right? Because uh, I, I keep getting texts from people saying that they still got stuff from Christmas, so I apologise to you. What's a book? Uh, it's a tree that they blended up, squashed into a little patty, and put some writing on it. Where did you get the name Smash Vision? It's because I break everything right. Um, yeah, I break everything, so they call me Smash. So yeah, it's like, it's just a fitting name, really. Smash Vision, eh? Smash goes fishing. Educational advice of the century. Even when you're having a poo, have a read. <laughs> yeah, that's sick. <laughs> Thanks for the tips. Any specific way to hold a bass? Oh, I should know for first time catching one. Um, yeah, don't just grab it by the lip and, and bend it and stuff like that. If you just gently hold them by the lip, yeah, and just cradle the stomach and then you can hold them up like that, that's the best way I've found without without damaging them, you know, especially a big bass. If you, you have to support the stomach or as you can hurt the um, the guts inside. So just hold it by the lip and cradle the actual weight of it and then you'll be sound. Um, it's, not, it's not rocket science. You know, a little bass you can hold by the, by, the, uh, by the mouth, but it's always any sort of fish. If you hold it and hold the weight properly, you'll be fine. <laughs> if you ever come to Texas, I can show you some spots. No foraging. No, not a lot of place for a big mix. It don't matter. If I come away, it's probably going to be mostly fishing anyway. Those gold ragworms are hard to hook. And the smell is the worst. Yeah, I find them easy to hook on the... I use size 1 or 1 weedless hooks on a Texas rig style. So, like, yeah, they do get bitten off now and again, but they're, like, they catch so well. But that that's the one thing is the smell. They do stink. Could you please give a quick shout out to Amanda Warner? You'd love it. All the best, mate. Shout out Amanda Warner. I know who I think I know who you're on about. <laughs> um, do you ever use black minnow lure for bass? I have done in the past, but because the they're quite weighted at the front, they've got a, a jig head. Um let one sec. See, the black minnows are like this. I don't like fishing with lures like this because I find they sink so quick that in the shallow ground that I fish, these get snagged up. So I tend to use like like the ear limitations like this, where these have got a rubber nose. So when you hit a rock, they tend to bounce off. Um, but yeah, for distance and stuff, the black minnows and stuff like these will work brilliant. They do tear really easily. Yeah, yeah, the gulps do, mate. Definitely. But, like, it's one of those, do you... They're really cheap. Six quid for a packet of 12, I think it is. So, like, and you can catch multiple fish on one if you just... If a bit gets nipped off, you can go in the bottom and reverse it, you know? I swear I'll start all from Wales. Yeah, I've got a lot of people watching from Wales. Sluggo are nice for bass. Yeah, sluggos are good. How does YouTube pay for the videos you do? Uh, I get paid for adverts. Um, so say if you watch five seconds and skip an advert, I'll get half the revenue. If you watch the whole 30 second advert, I'll get more revenue. Um, it gets paid per thousand views. You can get you can get from four pound to eight pound per thousand views, depending. Um, sometimes it can go down to 50p per thousand views. It just It just depends on who's watching, where, what time. There's so many variables to getting paid from YouTube. Um, but mostly it's, it's adverts. And like super chats from lives and stuff like that. It all helps. Um, good question. How can you teach a 10 year old kid on fishing on lobsters? Taking wrath fishing. Um, my niece is... Uh, when she was three or four, 
I took a ras fishing with like the has anyone used those pen rods? Uh, they're on Amazon for six quid. My niece had a three and a half pound ras on one of them when she was four years old. Um, I that's what I did is I just took my niece ras fishing because you can catch multiple fish, so the kids never have a chance to be bored. Um, foraging's even better um, if because there's so many creatures you can show them. You like it's hard for kids to get bored if if you've got so much stuff in front of them, you know. I love the pen rods, they are so fun. Yeah, they're brilliant. Yeah, my niece had the biggest fish I've ever seen on a pen rod. It was brilliant. She was like this, couldn't even hold the rod properly. I was like trying to hold it for her. I let your ad run. Oh, cheers, John Biff. I appreciate that, mate. Started on a crab line, nice. Hello, Jay, watching from the UK. I'm a woman who likes fishing, so I like watching your videos. I wish I'm there every time you eat lobster. Haha, <laughs> nice one. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Um, okay, thanks. No worries, buddy. No worries at all. Uh, here in Jamaica, watching every video and wishing I could go foraging. Shout out Jamaica. Bunch of legends. Yes, Dave, I'd love to do some pike fishing. Um, pike, I'm, I'm very interested in catching if I was going to do freshwater. Xander, I'd love to catch. Um, catfish. Catfish is definitely up on my, uh, up on my list. YouTube's my full-time job, yeah. Can it be dangerous to eat shore crab from a harbour? Yes, because, um, they can pick up a parasite. Um, yeah. That's that's the main thing. It's not so much they're going to poison you. It's the parasites that are in them. Some parasites can withstand your 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 acids in your stomach. Some can't. See, so like even in meats, like some meats, you might you might actually eat a parasite and not even know. So your stomach acids will kill it. But some 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 parasites in seafood you can't cook out. So yeah, like you'll end up with a parasite. Um, I just don't recommend taking anything from a harbour, you know what I mean? I've done it in the past, I'm not bloody, I'm not, I'm not innocent, but at the end of the day, I did that at my own risk, and I'd never promote someone to do that. Um, I had my first lobster in a restaurant in Cornwall this summer, and it was, was underwhelmed. It's like, rub a bad chef, or do people not like lobster? Yeah, that was that was badly cooked then. Uh, lobster, lobster shouldn't be like that. If it's like a boot, they've they've cooked it and cooked it again. Um, you don't want to cook like you don't. You overcook any sort of seafood, it's going to go horrible. Some nice bass coming out there at the moment. Biggest weekend, twelve pound. Bloody, that's a beauty. That's a cracking bass. Right, I'm gonna have to skip to the bottom, guys. Oh, I was at the bottom. <laughs> Please, can you give my boyfriend? We're watching you on the TV. Shout out, Alex. Thanks for watching, buddy. Hey, man, I'm off to the Isle of Wight next week. Going to catch me some lobsters, hopefully. All the best. All the best to you, Josh. Jay, please do a survival video with Sam. Make him do a a bush foraging tucker trial. <laughs> um, I don't know. We might do something like that, Rachel. Um, if I do a video like that, it's not going to be taken seriously because... I'm f uh, I'm always like half an hour from my home, so you know what I mean. It's not it's not exactly hard. Um, uh, like it's different. Excuse me, but um, it's different if you're in the UK because you can drive miles away from your house, so you ain't got a choice really. But um, here's different. I'm I'm on a little island. I only take crabs and prawns from harbors. That's up to you, mate. Um, yeah, I won't promote people doing that. Do you know Connor from the fishing shop? That is my brother, and you should make some more pots to put... Yeah, I know Connor. I was chatting to him today. Do you guys not eat wrasse? No. Used to catch some cracking wrasse on the Isle of Wight and found them lovely to eat. I'm not I'm not a big fan of wrasse because I find them uh, mushy. I find the meat very mushy. How long do I cook the lobsters in the grill for? Probably eight to ten minutes. If you, if you, what I like to do is get a, a boiling water. Make sure it's boiling. Yeah. Get your lobster, 
put it in the boiling water for five minutes, no longer. Take it out, quickly cut it, butterfly it. So cut it from the head topwards all the way to the bottom and butterfly it out and get some garlic butter and rub it all over and put it under the grill for I know, a minute. You, you, all you're doing is basically just melting the butter through. That, oh, I swear to God, it'll fall apart. It's, it's delicious. Shout out Tony Curtis. I'm gonna come off the live soon, guys. My back's really hurting. Big shout out, Jack Mayoff. Sorry if I screwed your name up, buddy. Do a catch and cook. That'll be insane. Do a camp catch and cook, yeah. Should do a collab. I'd love to do a collab with Bear Grylls. That'd be amazing. I swear to God, you'll see no no squeamish stuff from me. I love that sort of stuff. Yeah, you can catch lobsters in Newcastle. What's your favourite colour of Sidewinder and why? Scary's ill, but just because I've caught more bass on it and I've used it more. That's the only reason. I don't think they, like, I've caught, I've caught on the candies, I've caught on the whites. But it's just because I've used the scary more that I've caught more, so I can't, I can't really, can't really say it's the colour that's caught more because I think it's the design and the um, and the vibration more than the colour. But I'd say on a on a really murky water or a dark night, I'd use a darker colour lure so it silhouettes in the in the daylight. So um, yeah, um, but a lighter lure in the daytime is more visible. Um, Robin, thank you very much, mate. Appreciate that. Cheers, Erica. Appreciate that. Uh, Club with, yeah, maybe one day. Shout out to Louisiana. I went to Camp. I went to Camp Garden. Best lobster ever. My dad and I caught 26 fish in total, 24 striped bass, and two bluefish. Nice, that's a sesh. Oh, that's definitely on my cards, though. It's catching bluefish and striped bass. Striped bass grow massive. I'd love to do that. Uh, Craig Evans, yeah, definitely. Big shout out to Craig Evans. Um, I'll definitely do a lot of videos with him. Um, apparently he's going to be doing, I don't know if I should be saying this, he's going to be doing shows and stuff where uh, he goes around the UK and he's coming here and he said that um, that he's going to contact me as soon as he's here. So me and him will do some videos together. So as soon as the uh, virus stuff calms down, I take it he's going to come over. So um, me and Craig have spoken about it and if I go over there, I'll definitely do collab with him. And uh, if he comes here, I'll definitely do collabs with him. Because at the end of the day, if you're going away somewhere, um, you want local advice. Otherwise, you won't find as much. You know what I mean? So if he came here, I'd take him to my best lobster marks. Hands down, I'll find him lobsters. If I go over there, then he's going to show me all his best marks. So, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, it's one of them. But yeah, um, yeah, took a lot of inspiration from Craig for like learning species. I took a lot of inspiration from Craig for learning the species and stuff. So, uh, big shout out to Craig Evans. He's he's the grandfather of uh, of foraging on the internet. Fair play to him. Craig is a legend. He is John, real, definitely legend. Any more questions, guys? And then I'm gonna um, I'm gonna bust off. What's your best multiplier reel you have owned? Smash. Uh, for my. For my beach rods, the Pen Fathoms, I love them. I've thrown this round rocks, I've slammed it down, uh, I've, I've dunked it in water, I've done everything, and it's still as smooth as the day I brought it. Brilliant reel, and I've literally, you can snag up, I've got 30 pound line on here, and I, I wrench it up and all that, and um, the 525s, I bent the spool. Uh, I, I Literally, I've done it on both my reels, I bent both the spools. But these, I can't bend these. These are brilliant. Um, I'm not going to bed, Rachel. I've got paperwork to do. <laughs> and I've got two videos that I need to get up ready for whenever. 
Shout out to John Keen, man, the goat. Nice one. V not smash. No, we don't have a V notch system here. I, I, I think it's a bloody good system though, Dave. Um, I think the V notch system's a really good, because uh, like once you V notch that lobster, the um, you know what I mean. You can never take it, so it doesn't matter how big it gets. So, yeah, thumbs up to V notch, and I I think that's cool. If you can't break it, it must be good. Exactly. Uh, same as my rods, the diewiz. I can't break those, so yeah. Shout out to them. You always win at rock, paper, scissors. Are you cheating? No. Um, I don't always win. Sam went through a period, like, the OG subscribers will know. Um, Sam went through a period of about six videos about, what was it, last year? Where I couldn't win. I couldn't win the rock, paper, scissors. And, uh, yeah, he's just going through that sort of time now. Sam's here, look, cheater. <laughs> Fuck off, Sam. Excuse my language. But um, yeah, we just both have our days. Um, what some people, some people were giving me hate over that. And uh, I thought it was hilarious. But at the end of the day, like we win some, we lose some. At the end of the day, he never misses out. He was at work the other day and I gave him half a bloody lobster, so he can't talk. Thanks, man. Smash is the best fishing channel on YouTube. Cheers, mate. Appreciate that. Sam, Sam's a bloody legend. Very good friend. He's also a knob. Don't want to get him too cocky. I'm going now, Jay. See you later, Jamie. Take it easy, mate. How do you catch a bass? Lures or bait? Um, Smash are very good at rock, paper, scissors because he practices a lot in front of the mirror. Yeah, I'm like that. Come on, Sam. Come on, Sam. <laughs> you guys are funny. Inglorious is a legend. Good shout there, Kevin. Uh, based in Guernsey, Channel Islands. Uh, Guernsey in the Channel Islands, shall I say. We're in between France and England's like that, and we're the little island in the middle. Sam gets big claw often, smashes fair. Yeah, of course. It's same, if, 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 if I got the big claw, you can guarantee he's going to get the bigger shrimps or something like that. Vice versa, we just, we just sort it out, eh? E-Rock Outdoors, shout out. Right, I'll see you later, guys. Take it easy, eh? Thanks for joining in. Had, had fun chatting today. Um, I might do another live soon. Depends. I'm probably going to go on a video rampage again. So, yeah, it is what it is. Nice. Did it, did it, did it, did it. Take it easy, Dave. Hopefully, John. Da, 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 da. Right, sound. See you later, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it.